Thanks, everybody. The Australian made concert is a, is a great event at the Nationals. I've always enjoyed it very much. And we're going to start with a poem called Australian Made. I don't know how we got there, but uh, it seemed an obvious choice. It's a poem written by John Dengate. Uh, one night he was watching television with his father, Norm, and the ABC News presenter referred to a northwestern New South Wales town of Taboobara. And uh, Norm's reaction gave John a very good poem called Australian Made. My pop, I was remembering the other day, my pop in the 70s, say, used to refer to television as the idiot box. Do you remember that one? I wonder what he'd say today. And we'll go from that poem of John's uh, about his dad to the song that he wrote from his dad's perspective. From there, we'll see how we go. My father worked in a factory and the sheet steel came from BHP from a rolling mill near the hunter's mouth or a Kembla furnace further south the steel was all of the finest grade and every inch was Australian made copper and bronze he shaped and wrought the skills he possessed could not be bought to his trade and his union, he was true. Oh, that was the life my father knew. And when his faults in heaven the angels weighed, well, they found they were all Australian made. Oh, the old stone GPO still stands, displaying the craft of my father's hands. I gaze with pride and my heart responds when I see those fittings shaped in bronze my father's work to the world displayed and every ounce was Australian made through depression and war he remained unbowed he was kind but ah he was fiercely proud cant and privilege he despised he was not a man to be patronised he was not religious he never prayed his ethics we're all Australian made. His speech had the twang of the gum tree vowel. He watched TV with a brooding scowl. When the name of a town was mispronounced, he expressed disdain like a lion he pounced. His indignation was so keen, he threw his shoe at the TV screen. If we beat the palms in a cricket test, if we beat the palms in a cricket test, joy would reign and our home was blessed. Ah, but if we lost at the wall he stared, then we all felt touched by his dark despair. In his youth, he had wielded the willow blade and the runs he scored were Australian made. The only time my father cried was the night when old Ben Shifley died. When they buried Ben and the dead march played, my father's grief was Australian made. Now my father's dead, as are his mates, with their hopes and fears, with their loves and hates. Different values now prevail. What was sacrosanct? now is up for sale. For the global market requires free trade. Not me, mate. I'm Australian, mate.
is a guy. The eucalypts grow straight and tall, and the creeks did sweetly flow. A bad times were hard when the old man died, and the orchard would not pay. So I left the land for the factory bench, and I'm working there still. As the boards on the workshop floor. Now my soul is sheathed in endless fear, and my eyelids have turned to brass. And the orchard's gone, and the apple tree, where the wind whispered through the grass. Sun and holy ghost, sacramental wine of work goes sour upon my tongue. All the fruit was sweet on the apple tree when my brothers and I. In the mighty green shirt pines, as if the trees were blazing like a gas fire in the mines, and the wind's voice kept on mounting against the midnight's face. Well, I felt that roar well up in me. That roar has left its trace. I've heard the roar at the school gates when the holidays began. And the kids raced out like brumbies. Grown men turned and ran. They raced down through the playground. They cried out, "We're free!" Ah,、oh, the hungry voice of those school kids still lives inside of me. Football match as it rose in the crowded stands. When a winger leapt and took a pass with magic outstretched hands, and the double roar as he came inside and flashed across the line. Yeah, that was a roar that stirred my soul. A roar that was a sign. I've heard the roar at the racecourse. When the favourite lunged ahead, he took the lead at the ledger, and the rest of the field seemed dead. And the roar for horse and jockey, with the numbers in the fray,、well, that was a roar that spurred my blood, and victory was its name. Soldiers, when they first went to the front, when war was only a sporting match, they begged to go on a stunt. They roared, "Come on, Australia!" Wagga and Henty and Hay. 
Well, that was the roar of a slaughterhouse. There's nothing more to say. I've heard the roar at the town hall when the delegate rose to speak. A roar to shake the merciless. A roar to raise the weak. To raise the weak and wandering. To give eyes to the blind. Well, that was the roar of a tidal wave. That was the roar of a tidal wave. It was making up its mind. Thank you very much, everybody. For the last couple of years, Chloe and I have been uh, uh, dealing, I suppose, like we all have in a lot of ways, with the loss of, of John Dengate. And one of the things we all sort of thought at the wake, was anyone there that night in Glebe? I wonder, today, yeah. Uh, that we all looked at each other and thought, well, John's not here to sing those songs anymore. We better get in there and sing them ourselves. And the only way you can really do that with John's work, because he was so... Uh, very, very fine at doing it. I use a cricketing metaphor to describe John and his work. Uh, he averaged like Bradman, but he played like Keith Miller. <laughs> so we, we had to sort of get in there and we wanted to make an album that reflected our love of John's songs, but we didn't really want to try and take off some kind of tribute album. Uh, much as he deserves our tribute, we wanted to do something else. So we made a, a double album, we called it Light Another Fire and we've tried to put John's work into a, a, a broader context, a different kind of a, a, a view of John sunk into a tradition. So we surrounded him over the two and a half hours of music with uh, some other work, including some medleys, like this one. This is a song I'll always hear in John's voice. This is Henry Lawson's Freedom on the Wallaby uh, with Chris Kempster's tune. Now the medley is, of course, Freedom on the Wallaby followed by John's last verse. Now this is literally the verse, the last bit of poetry that John wrote that he left us. And it was scrunched up in a ball of paper on his desk when John died. And the, gosh, it's, it's got a few things to chew on and it's just dripping with John Dengate character. So we enjoy bringing this out for you. Yeah, the resulting album um, has this as the lead off track. We feel that somewhere between Henry Lawson and John Dengate, there's a very, very strong backbone for all of us. Australia's big country, our freedom's pumping bluey. Our freedom's on the wallaby, oh, don't you hear her cooey? She's just begun to boomerang, she'll knock the tyrant silly. She's going to light another fire and boil. Our fathers toiled for bitter bread while loafers thrive beside them. But food to eat and clothes to wear their native land united. And so they left their native land in spite of their devotion. And so they came, or if they stole, or sent across the ocean. Hey! Australia's big country, now freedom's something blue. Freedom's on the wallaby, ah, oh, don't you hear her cooey? She's just begun to boomerang, she'll knock the tyrant silly. She's going to light another fire and boil another billy. Freedom couldn't stand the glare of royalty's regalia. She left the loafers where they were and came out to Australia. Now across the mighty main, the chains have come to bind her. She little thought to see. 
see again the wrong she'd left behind her. Australia's a big country, our freedom's hunting bluey. Our freedom's on the wallaby, oh don't you hear her booey? She's just begun to boomerang, she'll knock the tyrant silly. She's going to light another fire and boil another billy. Our parents toiled to make a home, hard grummin' twas in clearin'. They wasn't troubled much with laws when they was pioneering. And now that we have made the land, the garden full of promise, old Breed must put his dirty hand and come to take it from us. So we must fly a rebel flag as others did before us. And we must sing a rebel song and join in rebel chorus. Oh, we'll make the tyrants feel the sting of those that they would throttle. They need to say the fault is ours. If blood should stain the water. Well, this world is full of terrible things. This world is full of curses. There's royal babies, queens and kings, out of tune, broken strings, bad, ill-written verses. Now we have to cope with government stealth, in vain we seek for answers. Now we have to cope with failing health and corporate crooks who steal our wealth. We have to deal with cancer. There's pommy bastards, screaming yanks, the curses are unending. Half-blind batsmen, greedy banks, still we stand in serried ranks. For all it's worth defending, we'll not surrender, won't give in, although our hair is grey. We come from tough, rebellious kin. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. We go on disobeying. Thanks, everybody. Uh, there's a, a traditional ballad from the... Oh, well, there's lots of traditional ballads about the, the Kelly gang. And this set of words has always been one of my favourite. It took us a little while to work out a way of approaching the song. It's a song that, that deals with the Kelly's long-promised visit to Gerildery. And uh, when they visited New South Wales, the New South Welshmen were thumbing their nose a little bit, thinking they might have cleaned up the bush rangers. It'll never happen again in New South Wales, and then it did. So this is the Kelly Gang, and because it does deal with that Gerildery experience, we'll use just a little bit of uh, the Gerildery letter, Joe Byrne and Ned's Gerildery letter, one of my favourite little bits of uh, Australian verse. A great tradition being carried on by Dingo's Breakfast. I don't know if you've heard any of the Dingo's Curses. Have you heard the Dingo's Curses? Go and hear them uh, tomorrow at one o'clock. They are superb. Come on, you sons of liberty. The news is going round. That on the ball that Kelly's head, they've said a thousand pounds. The Steve Hart. 500 they will give I bet if that sum was doubled I'm sure the Kelly boys would live Oh it was in November 78 The Kelly boys came down After shooting Sergeant Kennedy They rode into Euroa town I'd have robbed the bank of all its gold It was their idea that day Blood horses they was mounted on to make their getaway. Then Kelly walked into the bank, a pistol in his hand, hand over all the money now, ten thousand pound on demand. Likewise, the ammunition, the bold Ned Kelly said, and get on the go and don't be slow, or I'll shoot you. 
hooker they catch you next As everybody knows They come in handy to the gang By fitting them out with clothes And of those worn out rags My boys, they made a few bonfires And then destroyed the telegraph By cutting down the wire Sons of Irish bailiffs and English landlords. Oh! Next morning, dressed in troopers' clothes, still owners of the ground, they led their horses to the forge. Had a shot free all round. Took them back and mounted, and their plans turned out so well. They strolled along the main street, and they stuck up the Royal Hotel. Yeah, the Royal Hotel. Now they're robbing over, but they mounted them, made a quick retreat. They swept away with all their loot along down Morgan's old feet. And where they are now, well, I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell. So now, until I hear from them, I bid you so farewell. Well, they're a parcel of beings. I so farewell. Warm that needed, big belly, slow foot, narrow hips. Irish and English man. Thanks, everybody. Uh, John Dengate seemed to consider a concert where you didn't walk away with a very, very clear. Uh, idea of his values, of where he stood uh, as a failed performance, which meant as we wandered around the country with John, uh, with him in the back seat singing for days on him, uh, he would sometimes um, drive a couple out of the room. You know, you end up in a, you know, a club somewhere in the middle of Victoria, and because John was very clear in what he thought, a couple would leave sometimes. If you ever pointed that out to the, at the end of the concert, that you know, someone had left John, because half the fun was watching the audience watching John. <laughs> then he'd say, then my time here has not been wasted. I can't help but remember, is this still the tally room? Is this where this happens still? Or is that, that, it's all electronic now, okay. Well, we can trust that then. Oh, this old man, he talks shit, his newspapers are full of it. He's a phone-hacking liar backing pops beyond the pale. This old man should be in jail. Reclaim Australia? Yeah, send them all home. We were here second. Brian Bell for that one. As I was walking down the road, he suddenly appeared. A bloody turban Muslim with a big Bin Laden beard. Oh, I asked, are you a terrorist? Is that your bloody look? He said, no, I'm a carpenter. I'm on my way to work. 
I watched him, I tracked him, I rang up ASIO, I dropped him into Alan Jones on Talkback Radio. I may not be a beauty and I don't have any sins, but by God I know my duty to the national defence. That's your chorus. Everywhere it makes a man afraid I'm buying a machine gun and I'll build a barricade Oh, you'll have to know the password if you come to visit me Shoot first ask questions later, mate, that's my philosophy I watched him, I tracked him, I rang up ASIO I dogged him into Alan Jones on Talkback Radio be a beauty and I don't have any sense, but by God I know my duty to the national defense. Ah, but you can't choose your relations, eh? Oh, my Auntie May's eccentric, you're paranoid, she said. She doesn't believe the terrorists are underneath the bed. It's hysteria, I don't know what she meant She said she's far more frightened of the federal government I watched him, I tracked him, I rang up ASIO I dobbed him into Alan Jones on Talkback Radio I may not be a beauty and I don't have any sense But by God I know my duty to the national defence And when Jordan first wrote this song uh, the Prime Minister it was John Howard. That was a few ago, wasn't it? But it was depressingly easy to change the start of the next verse to Tony Abbott. But you know, we live in Australia with Prime Ministers with the shelf life of yogurt. And only half the culture. Abbott will protect us, he's very strong and brave He's passing legislation that will make you all behave You won't be facing mecca on that silly bloody mat You'll all be church on Sunday, Abdul Codge, you taste on that Hey! Now watch them, track them, ring up ASIO Dob them into Alan Jones on Talkback Radio I don't have any sense, but by God I know my duty to the national. On fire in the local pub, I state my point of view. I read it in the Telegraph, and so it must be true. I may not be a beauty, and I don't have any sense, but by God I know my duty to the national. Thanks very much. We've got just two minutes. Okay, well, that's it. I thought we'd get a 10 minutes call. We didn't, so thank you very much. Um, oh, well, I'll just tell you before we go that we will be up the back selling CDs and we're going home via vinyl on them. Um, but before I tell you this story, can you please thank Baz Cooper on the wild flaring accordion? Thank you very much. And the hat. The marvellous, the magnificent, and the very, very busy Matt Nightingale on the bass. Um, our long-term partner in crime, long-suffering partner, Bill Brown on the drums, thank you. And singing so very, very well. And playing mandolin as well, Chloe Roberts. So I'll just leave you this story. We'll be up the back. We'll have to light another fire album with us. And we've got all our other ones too. So it'd be lovely to see you if you're after a copy. If you've bought one already, thank you very much. We're going home by a bind along, so we need a little bit of drinking money. No, that, I shouldn't say. That's not a selling point, really, is it? But uh, we came down through bind along as well on uh, Tuesday. And we arrived at bind along at about just before lunchtime. And I don't know if it was just the pre-festival tension or what it was. But... Uh, Things were a bit testy in the car, and it was just before lunch. 
And I somehow, in buying along, lost Chloe and the two girls. Yes, it's hard to do, I know. But as Chloe says, she only lost one person. Anyway, in retrospect, this might not have been the right idea, but I thought, you know, if I go to the pub, they'll find me eventually. And I walked into the pub in Byron along, and there was a no one else in the, in the pub except a, a youngish sort of barmaid behind the bar, sort of a little midi glass and a tea towel. And look, no one does surly service like an Australian. Like, like, it is just something we're very, very good at. We should export to them. Maybe we do. Uh, anyway, so she didn't even look up, you know. And in, in the end, I had to get her attention with a sort of a, <coughs> um, mm. And she looked up and she walked out. She didn't say anything. And I looked at her and she had the sourest look on her face. I don't know what was wrong. Probably nothing, but she was very surly. And I said, look, I t I'm just... Anyway, just a beer, a mint, please. Uh, a pie, it's near lunchtime, remember? Uh, and I looked at her surly face and I said, and a few kind words. And she went down the end of the bar and she pulled the mini. She came back, she banged it on the bar so hard that most of it frothed over onto the bar. She went back to the pie warmer and took out something that may have been a pie once. And she brought it back and she threw it on the bar and she walked away and I went, um, in a few kind words. She said, don't eat the pie. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of the show.